What's the most important question that we need to ask ourselves when we're in a relationship? Well, I, I believe the most important question we need to ask ourselves is what would love do? What does love do? That, that is the most important question that we need to ask in a relationship. The whole point of having a relationship is to have a loving relationship, not one where people are fighting and bickering and, and causing all these troubles with each other all the time. So we need to be focused, and that involves each person in the relationship being focused on that one question, what would love do in this situation? What would love do? The problem with that question is this. The majority of us are so damaged in love from our childhood generally or from our environmental things as we were growing up that we have, we have or we believe that we know what love would do mm -hmm. when often it's not what God's love would do. So you could say the really biggest question again, the bigger question than what would love do is what would God's love do is probably the most important question that you could actually ask. So if we're focused on what would God's love do rather than what would love do, we will find actually that quite often what we believe is loving in terms of an action is not what God acts like. So therefore it is not loving from God's perspective. Mm -hmm. And so we need to understand the difference between these two questions. What would love do and what would God's love do? We must understand that in the end what we're aiming for is what God's love would do and not what humans' definition of love would do. And to do that, we have to confront within ourselves our own personal definitions of love. What I see happening a lot of times is people are not confronting their own definitions of love they believe their own definitions of love to be correct. And when they believe these definitions of love to be correct, the problem is they then act upon their own definitions of love when frequently their own definition of love is completely different to their partner's definition of love. And of course, that brings up lots of issues. Whereas if we're both in the relationship aiming for what God's love will do, eventually, we'll have the same definition of love within each of us. And so therefore, we're able to resolve the question of what would love do the mm -hmm. same way. Whereas when we begin, we're asking this question, what does love do? It's almost like asking the question, we'd be asking the question, what does my love do? And what does your love do? And because we have different versions of love, because we've been brought up differently, we've had different experiences during our childhood and adolescence and adulthood, we then have a different opinion of what love should do. And in the end, we have to learn that we need to give up this opinion of what we think love should do and instead absorb what God's love would do, what God's opinion of love would be. So just to clarify, you're mm. saying that we can be damaged in our understanding of what real love is because of our childhood experiences. Of course. And, and we, we have often very serious flaws in what we understand love to be. Like a person who's brought up in an abusive environment believes that getting smacked around occasionally is a loving act. Yeah. So we, we often have very distorted viewpoints of what love would allow us to do and also allow us to accept from someone else. Right. Yeah. But then you're saying if we examine how God loves, then we can start to begin to have a proper understanding of what love would do in terms of... Yes, because it's impossible for us to see our own flaws unless we have something to compare it with. And the problem I see for most people is they have a very strong personal definition of what they believe love to be. But, but unfortunately, their strong personal definition is not anything associated with God's version of love. You know, it's, it's only what they want love to be based often upon what addictions they've developed over the period of their life and so forth. Mm -hmm. And so they then project that on their partner. And of course, that creates major problems with their partner and, and major problems in the relationship and the smoothness of the relationship. And we see so much pain and suffering in relationships today and so much emotional energy gets pumped into the relationships that have a lot of pain and suffering involved. And the whole reason why a lot of this pain and suffering is occurring is because our definition of love is flawed. So while we need to ask ourselves the question, what does love do or what would love do, we also need to be aware that our own concept of love 
being seriously flawed needs to be supplemented, that question needs to be supplemented with the real question is what does God's love do? So we're changing our focus now. We're changing our focus and what do I want out of the relationship to what does God think is a good relationship? What, what is God's definition of a relationship? What, how does God see things? How, how does God, how did God design us to interact with each other? Yeah. What, how, how does God see love occurring in the relationship itself? These are the primary questions that we need to ask ourselves rather than always focusing on what are my selfish motivations for being in this relationship? And once we work our way through those, that primary question, and, and everything we can say today is going to be based on that primary question, mm -hmm. what would God's love do? Everything has to be based on that question because our own definition of what love would do will often be flawed. And I guess taking that viewpoint of what would or what does God's love do helps us step back from our selfish viewpoint of what's actually going on. Of course. Yeah. And it also helps both of us in the relationship work towards an ideal. Mm. Whereas when both of us are just focused on our own definition, so my, if I entered a relationship with you focused on my own definition of love, then I'd be going, why isn't Mary doing this? Why isn't Mary doing that? What's the problem with Mary now? Like, why is she, why is she acting this way? Why is she acting that way? She's not doing what, you know, and, and I'd be very focused on getting my addictions met and I'd think that's love. Yeah. And as a result of focusing on my addictions, every time you didn't, you know, look after my addictions, I'd be going, what's going on here? Well, you know, there's something wrong. This is not a very nice relationship. I think I'll go and find someone else who's going to focus on my addictions or whatever. Yeah. And that's not the ideal. The ideal is... What is God's definition of love? How can we both work towards God's definition of love? And in fact, I feel probably there is an important aspect of this that we need to raise, and that is, do we even want to? And I feel that is probably the, the first question that each person needs to ask us, each other in the relationship. I need to ask myself in our relationship, do I really want to love as God loves in this relationship? Yeah. And if you ask the same question, do I really want to love as God loves in this relationship? And both of us are working towards that ideal. There's a very high likelihood our relationship will, will, will stand any strains. And the only time our relationship would eventually part under those circumstances is if we discovered through this process that we weren't soulmates. But even if we were growing towards this, I, this um, ideal, ideal of loving the way God loves, mm -hmm. even that parting wouldn't be acrimonious, would it? Not at all. It would be a very friendly parting. We would still um, probably enjoy the company of the person. We wouldn't be wanting a soulmate relationship with the person. We wouldn't be wanting a sexual relationship with the person. But we could still cope with the parting quite easily, in fact, if we had those particular ideals. What I see is most people don't have those ideals, of course. So, so I want my addictions met, you want your addictions met. As long as both of our addictions are codependent, we'll have an okay relationship. And that's how the average relationship on the planet is. Yeah. It's a constant codependency between two people. And quite often I find it funny in some ways when people come up and ask us questions about their relationship because they do not understand that they're complaining all about all these things in their husband or wife and uh, but, but frequently their husband and wife has just as long a list or if not a longer one of all the complaints they have about the the per who, person who's come up to ask us the questions but because the person who's coming up to ask us questions often doesn't have their partner with them we can't address those particular issues whereas uh, whereas god addresses both parties in the relationship god's love if we were both focused on god's love would address both parties in the relationship and so I feel, let's say I'm an atheist and I want to have a better relationship, then of course I'll probably not consider God. Yeah. And then I've got to ask myself the question, what would love do? But often the answer is going to be what I feel love would do and not what love in its pure form would do. Yeah. And that's the problem that we face if we're not focused on what would God's love do. Mm -hmm. And I feel that uh, if we focus ourselves on what would God's love do, we will very rapidly get answers about what we should be doing in similar situations. Yeah. So in our relationship with our partner, what do I do in this situation? Well, what does God love do in that situation with me? And then we can easily determine what we could do with each other. But to do that, I have to want it. And that's where it gets down to. Do, does the person in the relationship 
really have the will to work through their issues in the relationship. Often people come up to us, as you know, and they basically try to set us up, really. Mm -hmm. but, but because they want to leave the relationship and they're just looking for a reason why. Mm -hmm. and, and they think that if, if they can come up to ask and ask a question and get a certain answer, then that gives them the reason why they should leave. And I don't go for that very much, of course, because to me that's insincere. If a person's going to just ask a question without wanting any truth and they already have made a choice in their own mind that they want to leave, then why haven't they already left? Like, and take full responsibility rather than trying to blame me for it. <laughs> um, so I, and also they're missing the, the point, aren't they, that you're raising, which is... Which is always about love. Yeah. Like what's out of harmony with love in you, not, not in your partner, in you. You know, a lot of times we have people coming up and they go, my partner does this, my partner does that, my partner does that. I'm going, yeah, what do you do? Oh, I'm perfect. And I say, are you perfect? No. So what do you do? Like, what, what is it that you do that's out of harmony with love, that you know is out of harmony with love? And they go, oh, but, but, you know, they always want to put the focus back on their partner. I don't feel that is a very sincere process. If you really want to have a good relationship with your partner, focus firstly on your flaws. Focus firstly on what you need to improve. Stop focusing on your partner. Focus firstly on how are you going to love what, how God loves Mm -hmm. Or how are you going to love in a pure manner if you're not interested in God at all? Ask that at least that question. How are you going to love in a pure manner? Is your love pure at the moment? What does your partner think? Is, does your partner think your love's pure at the moment? Right? Mm -hmm. These are all important questions, all revolving around this one question, what does love do? What would God's love do? So I feel that's the primary first question that every single person should ask themselves. What does God love do? The second question involved with that is, do I really want to love the way God loves? Do I really want to love in a pure way? Or is the only reason why I'm having a relationship just to have all of my addictions met? So my suggestion is if that's the case, that your only reason why you want a relationship is to get all your addictions met, then you're probably in a relationship like that already. <laughs> but if not, then forget the relationship you're in and go and find one that meets all of your addictions. In the end, you're not going to be very happy you both won't be very happy. No. You'll both create a lot of pain and suffering doing that. And in the long run, your life isn't going to be very pleasant as a result, but that's your choice. My suggestion instead of doing that is stop wanting to get you just your own addictions met and look at how do you purify your love with your partner so that you can have a beautiful relationship, one that's functional, beautiful and, and full of passion and desire. Mm. And I suppose if we realise that we don't want to love as God loves, why not? Exactly. Because if we think about it logically, <clears throat> God's got an abundance of love for everyone and wouldn't that be great? And God's happy all the time. Exactly. So that seems like a good thing to aim for. So why wouldn't I want to love in the way that God loves? Exactly. Yeah. And what, what I find is that most people who don't feel like loving the way God's love are actually in a huge amount of rebellion about love. Mm -hmm. They're in a huge amount of anger about love, which they're not getting rid of. That covers over a large amount of sadness, generally, about love that they're not willing to release. And so they come into a relation and go, I want you to do what I want. I want, I want to control. I want to manipulate. I want to get exactly what I want. And, and of course, you're not going to have a great relationship like this. And in fact, many of the people who have that attitude don't finish up having a relationship at all for that reason. Nobody can put up with them <laughs> because they have not considered, they're so angry about loving in a pure manner, they don't want to love in a pure manner. And so what do they do? They just avoid the whole question of love altogether and focus on getting their addictions met. That is not the way to have a pure relationship. The way to have a pure relationship is firstly focus on the question, how or what would love do mm. in this situation? And if you don't know what your love would do, ask yourself, what does God's love do in this situation? That is the best question to ask right up front. Lovely. Thank yeah. you.